Hello, hello. Um, first, I need to clarify one thing. Um, in the beginning of last episode, number 10, uh, I apologized that I hadn't had time to continue making the clips. Uh, that wasn't completely the truth. Actually, I couldn't continue before God gave me the words. And for a week, he gave me everything else to do, but nothing related to to this vlog. So I had to wait. So saying I didn't have time to come back to this wasn't true. It wasn't the real reason. It was actually a lie. Maybe a pretty white lie, but it makes no difference. So please forgive me for telling you a lie. Um, then back to my story. Um, when the marriage crisis had been on for a couple of weeks, my wife had disappeared and I had heard that the church had arranged her safe place to plead, to be. Uh, the marriage counselors of, the, of our church contacted me and asked me if I was willing to receive their help. Uh, of course I was. I was thankful for the offer and soon we had the first meeting with them. Uh, the counselors told us the rules of counseling and promised that um, all discussions are strictly confidential. The counselors meet and discuss with us only when we are both present. Uh, the counselors don't take sides, they only help us to solve the problems and move on together or separate. And the counselors are completely open with us, share all the information to both parties, for promises. Um, the rules were wise, and it was very easy to agree. The first meeting was very productive, and it gave me a lot of hope. Even though the behavior of my wife worried me a lot. A week later we met the second time. Already when I entered the room in the second time, I knew that something was wrong, but I couldn't say what it was. The meeting started by a statement, uh, with a statement by the marriage counselors. Mika, we, the marriage counselors, have been analyzing your situation and come to a conclusion that you and your family are manipulative. And that's the source of your marital problems. I was like, what? I had never been to marriage counseling before. But I had never heard that counselors would take sides and accuse one side to be guilty of the crisis. I was also, uh, uh, that, that was also against their own rules that they told us in the first meeting. Uh, but because God had started dealing with me, showing the truth about myself, I was ready to consider. What if it was true? So I asked them to give me a minute to consider. I went through everything I know about manipulation, compared that to myself, my actions, my talking, my relationships and marriage with my wife. And the result was negative. Then I gave a little thought to my family and the result was the same, negative. So I gave the counsel counselors an answer. I don't know exactly what you mean by manipulative. But as I've learned to understand it, manipulation is bending the truth, uh, twisting the truth for your own benefit. If this is what you mean, my answer is no. 
And what comes to my family, the answer is the same. No. Me and my family are not manipulative. The counselors didn't like my answer very much. They didn't accept it. They, ex uh, they accused me for being manipulative and it would be better for me to confess. It was the only way out of the crisis. That's what they said. I told them that I'm, I'm able to be manipulative. We all are. And as a professional filmmaker, it's basically my work to manipulate the audience to believe but I never ever use this ability in real life hardly use it in my work and that causes me problems in the ad business and anybody who knows me knows how allergic I am to lies and manipulation how much I value the truth So how on earth can you accuse me for being manipulative? And even more, how, how can you call my family manipulative when you've never met them? The counselors got confused. They started to accuse me for not being honest about myself. I was shocked. First of all, I had never heard about Christian marriage counseling, where counselors were making judgments after the first meeting. That was outrageous. I was about to walk away, but they talked me over to sit down and continue, so I stayed. But the counselors kept their opinion and tried to make me admit my weakness. I refused and told that I cannot admit something that is not true. The counselors answered me with these words. There is your truth, my truth and her truth. This is not a matter of truth. I couldn't believe that the Christian marriage counselor would say something like this. So I asked them if they really meant that there is no such thing as truth. The Bible tells about it. The journalism believes in it. The justice system is built on it. And the science is searching for it. And here in my Christian marriage counseling meeting, someone says, the, the, the truth doesn't matter. They answered me that the Bible has nothing to do with this. I said it's, it has everything to do with this. We are in Christian marriage counseling, so isn't it essential to know the truth? What does the Bible say it tells about marriage, relationships, truth, etc., etc.? They didn't want to answer. Instead, they started to accuse me for being non-cooperative. I tried to explain again that I can't admit something that is not true. And as soon as they don't tell me more, how could I reconsider anything? If they accuse me for something like this, it should be their duty to show me where and when I was manipulative, right? The counselors refused to give me the examples, but after demanding it, they promised to do so by email after the meeting. I never received those examples. There was never the next meeting. A few days later, the counselors told that they don't think they can help us anymore. Suddenly I was in a situation 
where I, I was accused of something I had not committed. My wife was delusional, acting like another person. My church had taken her from me to an unknown, safe place. I didn't know how to reach her. I didn't have any help. I was terribly worried about her. And God was saying, this is it. So I turned to God and said, demand it. The masters. What was going on? God gave me an answer. Please open the Bible and read the book of Job entirely. And the story of the resurrection of Lazarus from the Gospel of John, chapter 11. Now I'm going to ask you, my friend. To do the same, read these passages. And next time I'm, go I'm going to tell you what God wanted me to understand through those two stories. See you then.